Hey everyone, this is Vishal Krishna, the founder of TheUpstreamLife.com. Today I have with me Ritesh Agarwal, the founder of Invoice. Well, what is Invoice? Invoice is a company that provides common rails for two ERPs to talk to each other. You may think why that is significant. If you are an SME supplying to a large company, then you know the problem with invoices. You may not get paid on time. You may lose on your working capital. So solving all that is Invoice. They help you with collections, they help you with invoice discounting, and they help you with lending as well. So check out this interview with Ritesh because Ritesh is also a serial entrepreneur. He's been there, done that, and it's going to be interesting because it's part of your finance story too. By the way, I'm sponsored by Finverse.guru, an app that allows you to upskill. So if you're a BCom student, go check that app out. It's called Finverse.guru. Thank you guys. Check out the interview. Ritesh, thank you for being on the show. You know, I'm so honored to have you because I've known you for a long time. And the fact that you've been a serial entrepreneur and you've always been ahead of the technology and business curve when it comes to banking, right? So now you started something called Invoice. Interesting concept. We all know how difficult it is to go raise money on invoices. So what is Invoice actually doing? Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot, Vishal, for hosting me. Uh, invoice is a concept wherein I'm trying to resolve the pain for any two business entities and possibly for consumers in some time to come. Something which I realized, the world is automated. ERPs are there. Now, buyers and sellers are automated. Pretty much anybody who is above an annual throughput of, say, 20 crore per year in India has some sort of automation. And... Uh, they are raising purchase orders, they are raising invoices, they are getting payment, but their automation finishes at their end. If I am the buyer and I'm sending a purchase order to you, purchase order raising is automated on my side, but it becomes manual on your side. When you are sending invoice to me, you are automated. You might be using the world's best tool. ERP yeah. or tool, but then automation is not connected to my automation. This problem I realized is cutting across any size of business. So Invoice is offering world's first platform for any two ERPs to exchange data with each other, which has not been done earlier. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk because I come on the retail manufacturing side. Say, let's say, take automobile for an example, because that's that's what you and I like. Say, uh, for example, say, I'm a Toyota and I've got an ecosystem of uh, vendors. And uh, they, I as a vendor, invoice Toyota. Uh, if you're in the Toyota ecosystem, aren't you in the same ERP? Yes. Yes, right. But uh, but they still have a problem. Of talking yeah, because other. even if two mega uh, entities have ERP, they are not connected to each other. Okay. So let us say, uh, with all due respect, SAP. Mm -hmm. Now, Entity 1 and Entity 2 both have SAP. Okay. Yes. But how do they exchange data even within SAP? There are multiple problems. One, I may not even know what ERP you are using. And I don't know how to exchange data with you. And then you may not trust and you may not open up the doors of your ERP to receive or exchange data with me. Lots of issues. Even the ERP service provider would not own the data quality, the protection, the sanctity and the responsibility when data is being exchanged. So this is easier if both the entities are on the same ERP. But imagine the world <clears throat> when both the ERPs are, both the entities are on different ERPs. Mm. So you might be using Tally, I might be using SAP. Where is the common rail? So as we speak, the world, the problem is not peculiar only to India. On planet Earth, Vishal, there is no technology that as an industry standard, two ERPs can exchange data with each other. That doesn't exist. People might have done pair technology, like you might be a, a Maruti, I might be say Tata's, or I might be somebody who is big shot. Mm. So between your SAP and my SAP, we might have done some data coupling. Mm. But that's pair. Only two of us can use that. But that's not industry standard. So the bold statement, the invoice is world's first interoperable bi-directional platform for data exchange. Okay. 
I want to bring in Nandan and what they're doing to build that uh, stack for uh, all the retail stores or all the businesses. They're trying to bring all of them in one platform, correct? And once that happens, it'll use a lot of data. It'll use, uh, say, I mean, for obviously they're going to use it uh, to bring more people on the tax net also. It'll make it easier for businesses. But the fact that they have to solve the invoicing problem is a big thing. Uh, Connecting an invoice on time means you save on your working capital. Capital, correct? Am yes. I right there? Yeah, you are right. No? So tell me, tell me, how does the ecosystem work today in terms of what is the benefit of using an invoice platform when all of us go online? I'm glad you said that everything is a disparate system. I can be on a tally. The small retail store can be on some some ERP that nobody knows about. It can be a, a customized ERP. But when I raise an invoice to a larger brand like a ITC or HUL then, you know, payment cycles are different or to a master distributor, their ERPs are different. I get that. How will invoice solve that piece and how will you save on the working capital? Okay. So, uh, when seller sends an invoice, for them, they have to receive the money on time. And when we are talking about two different segments, company to distributor, let's call it C2D. Yes, please. And another segment is distributor to retailer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in the case of distributor to retailer, there is a credit period, which okay. is uh, pretty much anything between 7 days to 30 days or 40 days. The number of invoices are large. Uh, you can have two invoices every week or at any point of time, you may have 6 to 10 invoices in outstanding mode. Pretty much the seller who has sent invoice has one or the two people in their office only to remind people, hey, Vishal, you owe me this much. And Vishal is an honest guy. Yeah, I keep calling people, right? Uh, yeah, and Vishal will call back. Hey, Ritesh, why don't you tell me how much is my outstanding? And trust me, 20 to 25% of accounts office time goes only in exchanging outstanding data. And after that, once Vishal makes the payment, you have to inform me UTR. For that simple reason that UTR has to come from your side and I have to reconcile it with my invoice. Both the information is with you, the buyer. It takes another 10 to 15 minutes. All inclusive, the statistics say, accounts team at a seller side spends anything between 25 to 30% time only in exchanging outstanding data and payment data. And we want to save this for the seller. At the same time for the buyer also, they want to know their outstanding. They want to know when they have to pay or they don't have to pay. Imagine if the buyer is a big entity, let us say a very big conglomerate and they receive invoices from so many uh, small, small suppliers or vendors and they go for supply chain finance or whatever arrangement with the banking industry. Quite often they are bombarded with the request, sir, Ritesh has presented an invoice of 20 lakhs on you. Is this okay? Are you going to pay? It's still manual, is it? And it's, yeah, it's manual. And uh, the big conglomerate says, yeah, okay, let me oblige Ritesh because he's a good uh, supplier. And then they say, yeah, it is in good order. We will pay in 15 days. And then the bill gets discounted. Then one more request, 20 more requests. People get irritated. The corporates say that's not my job. And then it's not integrated with their system. It's not integrated with SAP. There are three organizations, TREDS, Trade Receivable Discounting Solution. They need a confirmation from buyers. Now, if the buyer doesn't confirm, then they are not going to discount the bill. The whole world of invoice, the whole world of data exchange is absolutely working on islands. We need to build some network. We need to build some bridges so that data exchange across okay. the island becomes okay. industry standard. And you're doing this, uh, they just have to plug into your platform and you will manage it. How does it manage? Uh, is it, is it an, obviously everyone talks about the open APIs. Uh, ecosystem you take e APIs of the buyer then you take APIs of the seller and you integrate and then you manage it because you are in the world of uh, managing information asymmetry and that you're bringing in symmetry right uh, can that be done will both parties oblige I know the seller will oblige but will the buyer oblige so in our case we have uh, started targeting the big ERPs one which are prominent in the industry yes and we have made standard plugins and uh, Say for start, we have made a plugin with Tele ERP. And you'll be happy to note, Vishal, that our time to go live is less than 10 minutes. We can go live in less than 10 minutes. Now, to your question that 
seller may uh, take our plug-in, but what about buyer? So we don't want any friction. We don't want a buyer to feel like that, oh, I have to take invoice solution. No, I don't personally believe that future belongs to mobile applications. No, according to me, future belongs to a technology which is either dependent on browser or surface. That's my personal philosophy. So buyer does not have to know invoice company. Buyer need not take any of our technology plugin. They need not download any mobile application from invoice. We bring information on their laptop, on their mobile, and it is secured against OTP. And we bring the portal to them rather than we bring the customer to the portal. You know, the case of adoption in this case, uh, it will bring in transparency and accountability. And the seller now has recourse. I mean, he is now protected, uh, saying that, okay, this, this large buyer cannot pay me on time. Will that happen? In India, you've seen the case. You, you, you've been in business long enough. You know, payment cycles are sometimes overstretched or off terms, right? Will that change? It will change. And uh, thanks for asking this question because uh, invoice has the potential of helping CBDT and even GSTN. See, the challenges that GSTN faces that there are invoices, but the GSTN is not connected to banking industry. Mm. What about invoice becoming a plug-in wherein GST, GSTN gets connected to banking industry? There is a law as per GST department. Any invoice which is raised and not collected within 90 days, it has to be reversed. But we are at the mercy of the seller because they can always uh, continue. So yes, uh, invoice has the potential of even reporting to Ministry of Corporate Affairs if the invoice is not paid within 45 days and if the buyer is under uh, Udyam. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have taken enough measures that we support and uh, even the regulatory bodies will be benefited with the invoice platform. Okay, your quick thoughts on uh, you know the SME stack that the government of India, you know, the other side of it, the NPC, I guess, all of them are getting together to create this platform for SMEs. Do you think an SME stack works and where do you see yourself playing a role there? So government ha initiatives are really very nice and I really appreciate the way uh, government is bringing more innovations in SME sector. So we are not uh, something which is uh, coming in their way. See, we are just data exchange provider. Now, even if uh, uh, somebody uses uh, India stack for whatever Indian government is doing, let them continue but where the data ends so i as an sme might be using government of india's platform but at the end of the day data has to come inside my erp yeah the buyer again whether i am buyer or seller data has to come into my erp so what we are saying do whatever you want to do do whatever you want to do manually you want to do with government of india initiative mm. any stack that uh, india may bring we will still bring data symmetry we are the underlying underdog we are not in front we are in the background so we are like the platform which nobody sees mm. and people do not have to come out of their erps so we are like supplementing uh, technology to a lot of initiatives that indian government is taking okay, okay. there's another thing where smes can use uh, your platform for bill discounting yes um, where smes need immediate finance and therefore yes. they're discounted with banks or modern companies like Credex, who you're in talks with also, right? So it's interesting. How do you manage uh, bill discounting to invoice? So the, Why uh, is it important? Because I know the guys with the anchor tenants or the anchor customers or the buyers, it's easier to get bill discounting because people say, oh, you're a Tata Motors uh, supplier. So we'll give you, you know, immediate working capital. So that's sorted and therefore their bills can be discounted. But anybody outside of that ecosystem who's a who is not an who is not part of that anchor will always struggle and sometimes may also misuse their invoices. Correct. Do right. you want to talk about how you can solve that? Yeah, multi points. Point number one: when the seller is a smaller guy and the buyer is a big guy, prominently the finance is arranged by the big guy and you call anchor finance. Mm. They may bring lenders and lenders may say, "Okay, you become the anchor and we will fund your channel." Okay. But then at the end of the day, this guy also has to continue to accept the invoices. Mm. These lenders do not have a technology. Mm. And as uh, we have been talking to Credex, it is confirmed that 
big buyers or anchors require a technology mm -hmm. wherein they can say yes i know this invoice and i'm going to pay it and they don't want integration with their existing erp because of multiple reason one that the big erp requires big cost of integration second and the their licensing and the transaction cost may increase mm -hmm. so while in platform like invoice is very cost effective so this is reason number one why invoice is beneficial even for the big anchors mm -hmm. they don't have to integrate with their bigger erp and they can just look at the common folder and there is a visibility that lender gets point number two today if a bill is discounted independent of the anchor arrangement and i get a confirmation from let us say uh, tata motors i have supplied something to tata motors and i go to lender number one and i say please discount and it gets discounted potentially i can always go to some other lender and say hey you know there is an acceptance by tata motors discount so what if a same invoice gets discounted multiple times and that's cheating and that's cheating now whether it is intentional unintentional we don't know so the industry requires a common platform like invoice because i have the hooks inside either party erp i can block the invoice at the seller level itself hey you know what one that yes congratulations tata motor accepts that your invoice shall be paid but you know what you have already got it discounted with lender one sorry now you cannot get a discount of the lender too mm -hmm. it will take a little time for us to become an industry standard but then invoice is going to give an opportunity to all the lenders to have one common hook that okay if it is locked by invoice i'm not going to discount it so i am only going to provide more ammunition more power to the banking industry i am providing more risk assessment tools to the yeah. lenders got and it. invoice will help them okay I'm glad we spoke about invoice and you know everything else, but I also want to talk about how the Indian fintech ecosystem has evolved. You know, from 2014, there have been enormous changes. There's been there's been UPI, the implementation of GST. Obviously, they're talking about the India stack. They're talking about India stack as logistics stack, SME stack, agri stack, health stack. You know, everything will need some kind of data capture, right? It's it's interesting how India is progressing. Where do you see in India in the fintech ecosystem today? I mean, where do you see in the world? You've traveled well, so you know. Where is India? Is it progressive? Uh, how progressive are we when we compare ourselves to Western markets? I personally think as a traveler, there's, there should be something like an UPI all over the world. And I think there should be something like an UPI for businesses also. And that's where I hope Invoice and all the rest of the other startups come in and do something. Where are we in the fintech evolution today? So I'm very happy to be part of the India journey. And uh, in my personal view, India is way ahead of rest of the countries. When we talk about payment technology, when we talk about the initiatives being taken up by RBI, government, Niti Aayog, I really salute them. I really say that fantastic work, the type of automation, the type of APIs and everything coming up. Many of the initiatives are industry specific, but then at the end of the day, they have an underlying philosophy, which I really appreciate. Now, invoice is really going to interweave at the relevant touch point. So, like right now, uh, invoice is integrated with the NPCI payment tech stack. Okay, very soon we'll be talking to other regulators and we'll be talking to other uh, uh, government stack agencies providers. or stack providers. Now, according to me, the fintech ecosystem earlier focused on providing the technology or the products that the banks were offering they were just like old wine in new bottle okay yeah, basically saying banks are disrupted they have to face the music yeah so what i am saying is that for me banks are my partner whatever invoice is doing i am only giving them a tool to retain their customers say i'm talk i'm engaged with one of the private sector bank and i presented my concept to them and they liked it because they believe that invoice could be one of the tool for them to differentiate their service and products with the SME in the market. Okay, at the end of the day, banks are competing among themselves. Who's, uh, whose current account is being used the most? Yeah. Now, if I say that, uh, Mr. Vishal, I'm offering you a current account, but you know about bingo, it comes integrated with something which will work with your ERP yes. and it will ease out your this pain, that pain, and this is offering this gain. It gives a lot of leverage to that bank. So I believe that FinTech uh, have been offering what the banks were offering, but now the fintechs are focusing on newer things, infrastructure layer, products, products which are not necessarily 
old wine in new bottles. So like invoice is a fresh idea. Mm. So uh, I think that fintech are still in the evolving stage. And we'll see many more interesting concepts coming up you soon. You think this is the era of Indian fintech uh, going forward? Uh, in, for the Indian fintech for the world kind of a thing? Because I certainly see UPI being exported. And do you think many more of us will uh, see Indian startups on the fintech ecosystem go? I, I know you will say invoice will go. But where do you see the startup ecosystem today? You must be talking to a lot of these founders. What is the general buzz? Okay. So there are two parts to it. Mm. One is the common infrastructural layer. Mm. Say as you yourself are witnessing, UPI is going global. Yes. Okay. So thanks to government initiatives, that will continue to happen. Mm. More and more Indian technology will be shared mm. with the international entities and countries. Once that happens, it becomes very easy for Indian fintech because all they have to do is bring the same technology, host it in a different country. Because they have already done that integration in India. So like my company, I am already integrated with UPI, bi-directional. Okay. Now let us say that UPI goes to US or UK. Then it is very easy for me to offer the same thing what I am offering in India. So yes, Indian fintech will start offering similar services elsewhere also. And the time is right okay. for Indian fintech to start experimenting with local businesses in uh, foreign companies, countries. Okay. Today, in terms of invoice settlements uh, globally, say I'm, I am selling, I mean, my services to a global company. Say, let's say, for example, again, example, say a large Walmart or some Amazon abroad, right? What happens is uh, the invoicing there, the, the discounting can, uh, will, how, how is that ecosystem? Is that also digitally transformed today? The export side of it or it's not? A lot of automation has, has, has happened. In very recent, I have seen so many fintech, those who are working like as escrow manager, they have smart contracts and uh, they have a lot of... Fintechs, is it? Like, yeah, yeah, there are so many fintechs. Yeah. So it's not the banks, so they are disrupting banks. They are disrupting yeah. banks. But at the end of the day, anything that happens cross-border, there are lots of watchdogs and regulations. Say even in uh, India, uh, we have to be careful about the FEMA. We have to be careful about AD1 and AD2 licenses. Mm -hmm. But a lot of fintechs are partnering with banks on either side. And this is a very interesting use case because invoice is working in that direction. Mm. Uh, that if the invoice is across the border, let us say an Indian seller has given an invoice to UK, conventionally the payment will happen through SWIFT. Mm. Not only that it is expensive, it's expensive on cost and time both. Yes. But if imagine that there is an invoice India and there is an invoice UK, Trust me, I can do the settlement in eight seconds or less. And the cost would drop? Why would they drop? Uh, because... Isn't that a loss for the bank? Uh, banks are not losing. See, because uh, in which case, banks were not making money on the cost of transaction. Banks were making money on the foreign exchange. Banks were making money on the advisory. Banks were making money because there is a correspondent banking. And we are not taking that away from them. All we are just saying is that continue to make money wherever you are making. Only the courier boy send, charges, send only the fast. exactly the courier boy charges we are reducing because there is an invoice on either side. Mm -hmm. And you know, my KRA and bank's KRA are very different. Mm -hmm. Banks go behind float. Mm -hmm. I work on per transaction cost. I okay. don't, I, I, my KRA is not float. Okay. Your advice to the banking ecosystem quickly. Do you think they should work with startups more often rather than just uh, do this startup PR saying we do have a few startups? How serious should be about fintech disruption? I think banks' uh, mindset has changed for positive. Mm. And what the mindset was around 10 years back and today, there is a drastic positive change. Banks were, earlier articles were being written that mm. banks versus fintech. Mm. Okay. But now articles are being written banks and fintech. That's a better narrative, yes. That's a better narrative. So I, I really say thanks to uh, the banking fraternity. They are working with the fintech and uh, fintech brings uh, sales efficiency, operational efficiency. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the guidelines, the rules and regulations can still be the same as applicable to the bank. So banks can always put the same uh, checks and balances and fintech are more than happy and they are disciplined. They want to be disciplined because they want they want to play a long, uh, long, long run game. Very good. So, so I think fintech and bank will collaborate more and more and it is only going to benefit the ecosystem. Ritesh, now I'm going to talk about something about, you know, your previous journey as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is not easy. You were progressive 14, 15 when I met you. Obviously, UPI was just taking shape. You were part of that journey. 
you have to tell us how. And it's also difficult to close down a company and that's painful. But you being the hustler that you are, you managed to salvage it uh, and restart again. Right? Talk, talk me through that journey. You, let's start with uh, how you started off from the UPI journey. But uh, we're not mentioning the name of the company for reasons, but you could go on. Yeah, thanks. So it is around uh, 2013. I was uh, in a very senior position with a startup and uh, I was laid off mm -hmm. uh, because they had some challenges. And I saw a lot of things happening around me. Wallets were coming up and UUP was just uh, launched. And I had a stint in uh, Nairobi. So I have spent two, three years working uh, in Nairobi market. So I had my own view about wallets and whether wallets will survive or not, what's happening. And one common observation which I made with uh, Vishal, any of the merchant payments, merchant payments from the customer, everything is based on pull mechanism. Yes. Now, the source of money and the credentials have to be shared with the merchant and merchant will pull money. And that's where maximum frauds were happening. And then I saw this wallet concept. I was trying to marry three things. NUUP, the wallet framework, and uh, how do we get away from the pull mechanism? Okay, what is NUUP? You have to tell us that. A lot of our young audience wouldn't know it, but you say it's the safest technology and why? Yeah, so NUUP was launched way back in 2013, and it's like star 99 hash. And in my personal view, that is the most safe technology because it does not have a session that the mobile operating system can be interfered with. It directly talks to mobile uh, telecom operator and it cannot be intervened by any external factor. So NUUP is the safest technology, works on smartphones, works on feature phones, and it only pains me to say that NUP didn't pick up. Yeah, because the telecom operators killed it, right? They didn't want that business. Well, the it's cost, they needed to have it yeah, it because of the cost. Yeah, correct. So uh, what happened that who was the telecom operator prominently, whether it was Airtel or whether whatever, Airtel had tasted blood in Nairobi because their wallet. Yeah, they're with, very big in Africa. Right? Yeah, Safaricom uh, Association of Airtel was success. So why would they support NUP when they wanted to go for wallet industry? Okay. And uh, as I told you, you know, that, that most of people are running behind float. So NUP is only transactional. But if you go the wallet story, you have, float. you have float. And you predicted that the float story would die. Wallets would go away with UPI coming in. You said that in 15. Yeah, people really didn't like my statement. And uh, I was like uh, criticized as well. But I had predicted way back in 2015 that wallets will die today or tomorrow. It is just that we are waiting for the newspaper to publish their obituary. Uh, yeah, but uh, wallets will not succeed in any ecosystem where cost of banking transaction is very low. And thanks to Indian government and the banking industry, cost of banking transaction is very, very low in India. So wallets never had a future. Great. So, you, but yet the, the startup that you had, you wanted to disrupt even as you tried the B2C and you tried B2B, but then you had to close it down. Uh, was it because of management for you? Was it harder? you know, the ideation is one thing. They say it's fantastic to have ideas, to write papers, but it's dif different when you run a company. Did you face that? Yeah, I did face that. So, pre precisely 18th November 2014 is when I met Reserve Bank of India Mumbai office and I met DPSS. Mm -hmm. And I presented my concept to uh, the leadership there. And I was... Uh, accompanied by a very, very senior guy from a private sector bank and from NPCI. And I presented my concept of today what you know as UPI. Okay, and early private type of UPI. Correct. So that was my version of UPI. And I presented to RBI and I explained that as to why this technology is the future and what is in it for the banks and how NPCI and everything. So you went more towards the banks. You said, you, let's save the banks because you come, you come from that ecosystem, right? You wanted to be, ba you wanted banks to be relevant. So you went to that. Correct. Yeah, see, uh, my personal philosophy is that banks are here. Whether you hate them or you love them is your choice. Banks are here so long humans have money issues. Yes. Okay. So I always want to partner with banks. There is no reason why anybody should think otherwise. So even the UPI concept which I presented uh, to RBI uh, was with 
alliance and partnership with banks and that was the whole reason otherwise my previous company could have floated that company uh, that technology independently but then it would have taken me a lot of time to scale that but if the banks are with me it would have taken a different shape but yeah a lot of things went southward uh, our interaction in that uh, rbi yeah. meeting was okay. uh, not the way we should have conducted yeah. uh, things really went very bad and after that uh, my previous uh, fintech also had its own challenges uh, but somehow answering to your question that uh, how does it feel you know vishal it feels like if as if somebody is snatching your baby away from you okay a baby whom you have been holding yeah. uh, next to your chest but at the same time i believe that uh, uh, i really appreciate and say thanks to my co-founders who helped me see that there is no further road and they really counseled me it was a joint decision and all three of us we took a call that okay the time is right for us to shut it down but yes whatever salvage we could get from that company okay. uh, but yes i took an exit would you say it's because of the partnerships partnerships problem the bank selling the idea to the banks itself uh, was it running of the management was it was that the problem what 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 did you typically get wrong that you don't want to make the same mistake in invoice <laughs> well uh, in my previous fintech i've learned a lot mm-hmm. and i would say that most of the mistakes are my personal mistakes and uh, uh, i had assumptions and they didn't work out the way i had assumed so i would say that i had fantastic support from my co-founders and my team mm-hmm. it is just that uh, probably you know uh, i made a lot of rookie mistakes okay but i've uh, learned the hard way and uh, i'm not repeating any of those mistakes and you know the industry that i was in with my previous fintech uh the scaling required a lot of capital and we didn't realize it because you know we were under the impression that hey, you know what this is our technology we are doing it and we didn't realize that yes the technology is no more ours it is at a national level at a global level right. now okay right. so somewhere uh, that mistake i am not going to do in invoice in my new organization a lot of mistakes i did but yeah. uh, i am not repeating any well, of them go- go- good to know that you are a you are a solid hustler you like to talk you like to tell narratives why did you call it invoice it's easy to recognize you can use invoice in the same if i talk about invoices i have to talk about invoice that's your narrative so vishal you are struggling to switch between the word invoice and invoice yeah it's the and, same yeah and, and that's exactly what i want mm-hmm. i want the world to st- start saying hey, invoice me how, how did you get this domain name was it expensive uh not so expensive but you know uh, when i jump into anything i do a lot of research okay okay <laughs> and uh, when i was uh, thinking of this company you will be surprised this company's idea was conceptualized in 2015 and 16 okay. and i took it to somebody in the industry who is number 1 in their industry in india and the next competitor may be one tenth of them they like this concept it is just that we didn't qualify on their due diligence because our balance sheet so, was so you're an ideas guy you always had all these ideas stashed off you can pull off and you can start up the next one oh well yeah you can say that i have tricks under my <laughs> sleeves yeah <laughs> but invoice as a name yeah it took me some time okay uh, but the idea here is that it should become a verb when you talk next time you should tell to anybody hey invoice me not doesn't matter whether you are a seller or a buyer invoice me it's a bidirectional traffic link and it becomes a common noun to invoice right it's i wish you all the best there thanks a lot uh, you you are a person who doesn't read books you've been very honest in telling me this but what inspires you what does ritesh do if he's not building a startup okay so this question uh, even my wife asked me what do you do when you are at home because i'm staring at the tv and i'm just thinking so uh, one thing that i like is uh, a couple of drinks in the hand and uh, then the loud music around me and then uh, whenever i have little time left i watch videos i watch videos of what's happening in the industry i read about i i journals yeah, not journals i don't i don't read books but i read about the concept okay technical papers yeah what is that rbi is talking about right. what is that uk industry is talking about us industry is talking about what are the people talking about the problem statements i talk to people i interact i gather information i try to find out where is the opportunity that ritesh can make money for himself and for my investors and stakeholders and my team members and family everybody so what i love is certainly gathering knowledge and i judge i make my own view 2015 when 
wallets were success i had a view that they will die yeah you told me in fact yes i did one story that wallets may have it tough if upi comes out yeah you gave me a call yeah so how so that's panned out true so <laughs> now you want to be ahead of the curve don't you think yeah 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 so what's next for you then what are you reading or you don't read again pardon me guys what are you being inspired by apart from technical papers okay. nothing no movies nothing uh, okay so uh, i watch uh, as i said a lot of videos around domain knowledge business problems okay. and i love music okay but what i'm right now assessing is in my personal view again a bold statement swift mm-hmm. as a technology it died 15 years back but uh, nobody noticed so we are so nobody in my noticed it, yes. yeah so my view is that once invoice goes goes global and many more fintechs like mine we may have more invoices like company coming in us uk or globally swift may not exist i know what inspires you it's invoice and you are a businessman to the t you are incorrigible which is good okay <laughs> your advice to young people uh, they should learn finance i would say they learn any domain why why only finance but they you pick... seem to understand money like this uh, yes because uh, I started my career with ICICI Bank mm-hmm. okay and thanks to the leadership they really groomed me very well I understand banking and I have been with international uh, bankers uh, for 20 years I have advised banks I have advised uh, I have sold core banking solutions so I understand uh, where there are flaws in processes what products to be offered advice to the youngster is in your formative years which I would suggest first 3 to 5 years of your career try couple of things but get fixated on one keep a plan b but still get married to one idea either it will fetch you or ditch you you will figure out <laughs> but finance is one area and again i would say healthcare education food industry and finance these four industries will always prosper grow so long humans are there on the earth because you and i will always need good education we will eat okay. good food we require good health care and for all that we require money so out of these four domain which are my personal favorite if any youngster wants to innovate they want to disrupt i am willing to help them i am willing to support them yeah find a domain which excites you start challenging status quo just don't accept because somebody is telling you that do do this and this way what will happen maximum you'll fail but then you will have experience you can't have experience without failure i would say try try faster fail faster move on ritesh thank you so much for being on the show and uh, it's inspiring to me thank you thanks a lot vishal appreciate thank, thank you. you thank you guys